Hello everybody, Tyco Steve Green with you here. And today we're going to explore whether the, a person would want the Catrike 700 or the ICE VTX and pros and cons of each one. So let's get started. Alright, Catrike 700 or Ice VTX? What is your choice? How would you choose one over the other? Well, I'll give you a little backstory first, so settle in, it's a little story time. In 2013, I bought a uh, brand new Ice VTX that I was going to have custom built in England. Um, the VTX basically was a modified version of what came out in 2011, the ICE Vortex, V-O-R-T-E-X. And they took out the O, you know, I took out some uh, syllables there and made a VTX. So I was introduced to the ICE Vortex in 2011. I uh, had a booth for a couple of years at the recumbent cycle con. In those first two years they were in Southern California and I had ridden down there anyway. <clears throat> And so I was invited by the uh, producer of the show and the founder, Charles Coyne, to have a booth for my uh, Trike Asylum website. So I did that. I met Neil Selwood and his wife, Hero Selwood, at that show. <clears throat> and uh, I, I filmed uh, Neil. He's the co-owner of uh, ICE, Inspired Cycle Engineering, in England. And he did a little uh, video for me of uh, the Ice Vortex at the time, 2011. Well, in 2013, I had a booth at the Recumbent Cycle Con again. And I uh, got to test ride. The, you know, the, the, uh, some of the Ice folks were there, and I got to test ride uh, uh, the uh, Ice VTX. And I loved it. <clears throat> Fell in love with it immediately. <laughs> Hard to get into though because the cross arm on the frame is way forward and the seat is way low and way back. Doesn't matter if you're fit or not, <laughs> it takes a little contortion to get into. But once you're in it, it's an awesome trike. And so I made him an offer right on the spot for that floor model of the VTX. I was wanting to take it right then. It had already been spoken for. <laughs> I missed out by, I don't know, a matter of hours on, on getting that one that they had brought over. And so I, I didn't get that, so I, I put in an order, um, <clears throat> worked with uh, Neil, and uh, put in an order for one, and they started building it for me over there in England. <clears throat> and once it was all built, you know, they were sending me pictures of it uh, as they were uh, doing the build. And it turns out, I got a, there was this form that, because I was just ordering it directly from um, ICE, and so, I got this, I was informed by the U.S. government that I had to fill out a, uh, a form um, for the uh, military arm of the United States government, the Department of Homeland Security, because the cost of this uh, object that I was importing was more than, I think, 2,500 bucks or whatever. And I looked at the form and it, ha, you know, and they had already, the guys over there had already built this thing for me. It was waiting to be sent. And I had already paid for it. And so uh, I looked at this form, and uh, the Department of Homeland Security was asking all these questions about uh, bank account, purpose. And all, I mean, things that I felt were <clears throat> overreaching. I mean, I'm buying a tricycle, for heaven's sakes. A tricycle? <laughs> I'm importing a tricycle from England and I'm having to register myself as an official importer of foreign goods uh, because this price thing went over 2500 or whatever it was. I found that unacceptable. And so I uh, um, conversed with Neil and said, you know, Neil, this, this really goes against my brain doing this. And uh, he understood. He's, I think he's kind of an old surfer guy, you know, and uh, kind of alternative lifestyle maybe. 
And so he, he was totally understanding. And so actually, here's the thing. It, it was one step further than that. It, would, it had already been shipped from England to uh, Tennessee, the receiving station in the United States for imported goods. And uh, we worked out a deal where um, Neil had it shipped back to England. You know, I mean, it was already in the United States, my, my ice VTX. And, yeah, it was, it was upsetting because I really, you know, had my eye on that trike. I wanted that thing. And so what ended up happening, I went back and then uh, a local dealer said, hey, I can get you, I can get you a Cat Trike 700 for considerably less money. And, uh, you know, I'll give you a little deal for a little publicity on Trike Asylum. I was getting 3,000 views a day average on Trike Asylum. So I said, okay, I'll just do that. They're built in Florida, and uh, uh, so that's what I, so, and in 2014, so in 2013, I bought the VTX. <laughs> I never got to ride my own VTX, and in 2014, I bought the Catrike 700, and I did get that, as you know, if you've been following my stuff for any length of time. And so then I, I was notified by, um, you know, I was contacted by Neil, uh, or no, his son, Patrick, um, if what what they should do with my VTX, it was now I was sitting back in England, and I, and they said, "Do you want to, do you want us to hold on to it or whatever?" I said, "No, I just go ahead and sell it." So they they did. So I never I never realized that trike. But so I'm kind of that was a little backstory, um, my experience there. And so let's talk about the Cat Trike 700 and the Ice VTX. Okay. Both trikes are about the same weight, about the same weight. VTX has two different versions, you get some carbon fiber, and you can shave off a pound and a half or two pounds, you know, negligible. It's not gonna make any difference in your riding. So, and, and the Cat Trike 700 is right in there. So they're, this, they're basically essentially the same weight. Um, and the build quality on both trikes is excellent, excellent. You know, I always heard, well, the Cat Track 700 isn't built as well as the, as the Ice VTX. Well, I, I don't believe that at all. After owning the 700 and, and having it and riding it, um, the build quality on Cat Track is outstanding. I have no, no um, complaint there. And as far as speed, the trikes, the trikes are, they go just as fast. They're both 700 C rear wheel super speed trikes, okay? So they weigh the same, the build quality is the same, and the speed is the same. Now, before you, uh, anyone says, well, okay, wait a minute, the Ice VTX has some, some features that the 700 doesn't. Yes, I agree, it does. The steering is different, which is a big factor, and but, but they're both top of the line speed trikes and they'll both get you down the road in record time and they're both a thrill to ride. So in answering this question, I guess for a lot of people, money is, the, is a big factor in what trike they buy, okay? So if, if you are, are stuck in a, the, the money model there, and you only have X number of dollars to spend on a trike, and you want a speed trike, you want a top of the line, uh, well-known speed trike, and you say you have 3,500 bucks, you know, or whatever. I think the 700 at the time I bought it was uh, 3,000, and I, I think the VTX as I ordered it was a little over five, uh, in the fives, and, uh, they were going to cut me a little slack on that price for, you know, because when I get things, I talk about them, I write about them, and all that kind of stuff. So there's a big difference in the price, um, a couple thousand dollars difference. And so if you have a limited amount of funds, it pretty much answers the question for you. You know, like, okay, they both weigh approximately, essentially the same, they're both uh, well, uh, high quality and they both go just as fast. Okay, well, I can afford this one, but I can't afford that one. 
So you go with, you know, with, with the one, with the cat track. I was really happy with my cat track. Okay, so that's a consideration if you're thinking about these two uh, speed trikes and want one of them. Money, if money is, uh, is an, uh, an object there, then you may not have any choice. Okay, now, if money is no object, is it worth all that extra money in the ICE VTX when they, they weigh about the same, they're both a uh, high quality build and they both go just as fast? Is, that, is it really worth 2,000 extra bucks? Well, that's a matter of opinion based on the individual rider. But I would tell you one significant factor that you need to take into account. <clears throat> If you just want a, a lightweight speed trike and you're not going to be doing a lot of super high speed runs down mountains, <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't matter. It, it, it really doesn't matter. Both trikes are good. Uh, the uh, Cat Trike 700 has direct steering where you move the handlebars left and right because the handlebars go right to the kingpins, all right? And so it's this motion right here, whereas the Ice VTX has the indirect steering, which is a more expensive steering, costs more to design, more to engineer, and more to build. And you do like this, you move your hands let, you know, forward and backwards. There's none of this sideways stuff, okay? So why does that matter? <clears throat> well, with the 700, I was coming down a hill, I did a Pacific, uh, uh, an Oregon coast tour on my 700 with some you know, panniers on it and everything. I was coming down a hill on Highway 101, a, a mountain actually, a cape, and it was very steep and it was, the ocean was right here. And I, I was flying down this hill. This is a 45, 50 mile an hour hill. And there's a kick in the pants. And so I'm coming down it on my 700 and there was some kind of irregularity in the pavement. <clears throat> well, what happened is a thing that some people refer to as bump, B-U-M-P, bump steer. You hit a bump, and the bump <laughs> essentially takes over the steering of your trike, all right? And let me tell you, at 45, 50 miles an hour, whatever I was going there, because I don't have a speedometer on my trike, um, but it was, it was fast. It was definitely in there. And it, it got my attention immediately because, okay, on, on the uh, indirect steering, when you're going down a hill at speed, you basically lock your arms in, okay, to the to your sides, depending on how wide your body is, or to the side of the seat, and you can hold it steady. You you know you hit a bump, and it's not going to do much of anything to your steering. You're going to feel a bump. But on a 700 or any trike with um, direct steering, okay, this is indirect, okay. But with a, a trike with direct steering, including the 700, you can't, you can lock into the sides, but that still doesn't lock you in laterally, okay? And so I hit, there was some kind of a bump or irregularity in that uh, hill, that Manzanita hill or mountain, <laughs> and it, it caused this kind of thing. It took the wheels like that. And if I had had indirect steering, it would have remained solid. But with the direct, the, the, the force actually moves your hands. Because when you think about it, okay, the muscles that control holding fore and aft like this, you're talking powerful muscles, chest, back, you know, shoulders, I mean, and you're locked into the seat. The muscle, what you're doing, you, basically it's a rotator cuff thing with direct steering. It's this, okay? This is how it steers. And so it doesn't take much if you hit something nasty in the pavement at speed to, to do this. And then the wheels do, the, do that. And so it scared the lemon daylights out of me. I mean, for, for a microsecond, I thought, geez, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to crash. 45, 50 miles an hour going down this cape with, you know, big pine trees there and the ocean on the earth. I'm going to crash. Um, but I, I didn't. I mean, I, I held it, and from 
and I thought, it, it spooked me so much. It's one of those things where you just turn white. And I, and I was thinking about like putting on a brakes and just creeping down the hill the rest of the way. But I didn't, because I'm an adrenaline speed junkie, you know. And so I, I went on down. There were no more irregularities in the road. But there's, so there's a safety aspect here. Is it worth two thousand more dollars or whatever the difference in the price of those two trikes were at the time I bought each of them to for the steering? I would pay the extra money to get indirect steering for a couple of reasons. Safety is very important to me. I have never crashed on a tricycle, but I, I have seen two guys crash on these things, so it's possible. So safety is important because that'll ruin a trip or a day ride pretty fast if you go off the side of a mountain. You know, you always hear about getting hit by a car. Well, <laughs> getting hit by a car is, is not the only thing out there that you think about. You think about uh, staying on a road. So safety is important to me. Um, plus, I, I just, I, you get used to either one. You, get, you do get used to either one. But the, the higher end trikes use indirect steering for a reason, because it's far and away more stable at speed. And so I rode that Cat Trike 700, and uh, you know, I owned it for a little over a year, and I rode it fast. Maybe you're going fast on a, on a flat, or whatever, or if you're going fast, I mean, you can go fast downhill um, if the pavement is good, but if you get a, a chunk out of the pavement and those wheels hit at 40, 50 miles an hour, you can have that bump steer occur. That's what some people call it. And, uh, you know, where basically the road surface takes the steering uh, momentarily out of your control, and it's, it's a frightening thing. I didn't like it, <clears throat> but they're both excellent trikes. Do not believe anything you hear that that cat trike, the quality of cat trike is just not up to par. Well, it is up to par. It is up to par. And the, the steering, um, when you turn lock to lock on the, on the cat trike 700, the steering writes itself just fine. They got that steering dialed in for direct steering. My sister had a uh, Terra Trike Rover um, she, got, she had for several years, a few years ago, and on that it had direct steering too, but when you turn lock to lock, like in a tight, tight little spot in the street or something where, where you're just going really slow, that steering didn't write on, on the Terra Trike model. It stayed locked in to either full right or full left, and you actually had to give it a little oomph to get it back straight again. That was not my experience at all with the cat track. There was none of that. So just because something is direct steering with one company doesn't mean all companies design it quite the same. <laughs> that, that, that's the engineer's job. I would say if you're really intent on going fast and you will be going down some uh, steep mountain passes or some significant hills and you and you expect that you'll be hitting speeds 40, 45, 50, 55 miles an hour, then I would say stick with the indirect steering, which is the same kind as I have on this HP Velotechnic. Um, but again, if money is a uh, limiting factor for you, then go with the Cat Trike 700 because you would have no choice. <laughs> you can't afford the, the Ice VTX. You know, sometimes it gets down to a prestige thing. You know, I mean, you have these ardent supporters of Ice and ardent supporters of uh, Cat Trike. And they're like little, they're like politicians, you know, and you'll hear, oh no, nothing's better than a Cat Trike. Cat Trike's got them all beat. And then the others, I, people that I used to say the same thing, you know. Um, don't, don't listen to opinions that are based on brand loyalty. 
I've had two ice trikes, I've had one cat trike, and this time I went with this uh, HP Velo Technic because I just heard there was a top of the line of, of, uh, of all of them and the engineering and the design and everything. And as loyal as I've been to ice for years, um, I decided to give this a try. I'm totally happy with this. Uh, this, this is, uh, I like it even, I think the engineering and the design and um, the build uh, on, on these um, HP Velotechnics is, is even better than ice. Okay, and I never thought I would say that. But anyway, that's neither here nor there with Cat Trike 700 versus um, ice VTX. They're both super fun trikes. The 700 or VTX, it doesn't matter as far as the fun factor, as far as your ability to go flying down the, the road at high speeds and blowing everybody away, you'll do it on either one of them. You know, and if there's a half pound or a pound difference here or there between one model of the ice and the cat trike or whatever, it doesn't matter. Little trivial stuff like that is not going to determine how fast you go. How fast you go under your power going straight has everything to do with your physical strength and uh, cardiovascular ability to maintain a high speed. These trikes have so much potential that I found that even on a total flat ground with my 700, I would get up in the high gear and I could sustain a max effort for a short period of time. But uh, even, even with uh, my conditioning regimen, you can't sustain it. You can't sustain it for really very long, even on totally flat ground with no wind. I mean, you will hit a, a cardiovascular ceiling no matter how fit you are. You know, I mean, that's, that's why the uh, Tour de France uh, people Train. I mean, even they hit ceilings. Everybody hits a ceiling. You know, you can get the, the big high-end gear and, and <laughs> I guarantee you, Cat Track 700 or Ice VTX, no matter how good a physical condition you in and are in and cardiovascular condition, you'll hit a ceiling. You can't max those trikes out for long periods of time on the flat. You just can't do it. If you're sailing down mountain passes all the time, sure, you know, that's nothing, you're, you're coasting. But uh, for most of the riding we do, most of our riding is on flat or mild hills or, or whatever. It's not on screaming downhill descents of uh, 10 minutes where you're going over 50 miles an hour. That's not, <laughs> that's not the bulk of our riding. So you may not want to uh, put too much emphasis on that part of it. But anyway, those are some thoughts that I would throw out here, and I've been going on long enough, so I'm gonna let you go now, and uh, if you're thinking about those two trikes, and those aren't the only two trikes either. You can get to do the Green Speed Arrow, which may, is faster probably than either one of those, but again, you you get these trikes to a certain uh, level of gearing, and you can't, you can't sustain it anyway for very long. Short burst, yeah, but. Uh, so it, it gets to a point really where even if the green speed, speed arrow is slightly faster, it's, it's kind of a moot point. For most riders, most riders, the bulk of them, are not in top-notch uh, Olympian condition. And so any of these speed trikes, you know, carbon trikes, um, that's another brand made out of carbon, um, it, it doesn't matter at a certain point. If you want to pay extra to get a carbon trike from what I Sweden or whatever, um, just so so you can say you have carbon, okay. But it would be a rare person that uh, would actually need that. Um, you know, we are racers, right? We're out there having fun. <laughs> we adrenaline rushes. So don't get too carried away unless you're just into to uh, having the latest and the greatest and the coolest thing and the most expensive to impress your your uh, riding buddies. Okay, hey, some people are like that. They'll pay dearly for, you know, a carbon crank set or whatever, just to shave off 16 to 20 ounces of weight. You know, 
I won't do that. I won't do that. I, I, but some people do. So there's a lot to consider here. But the bottom line is, for most writers who uh, just absolutely love speed, it doesn't matter whether you have a 700 or VTX. You're going to have a lot of fun, and you're going to go really, really fast on a um, well-built trike. Either one. So, look at the whole picture and make your decision. See ya. Hi, I'm Neil from Inspired Cycle Engineering, and uh, I'd like to take you through the new Vortex for 2012. So, what we've got is um, a trike which we tried to focus on performance riders, so people are after more pure speed. So we've pushed the Vortex from what it was into something that is uh, now going to be a trike that's under 30 pounds, all that weight. And to get there, we've had to do a number of things to make that possible. So we've basically got a new seat design um, with a very lightweight ventilated cover. Um, we've got new seat mountings underneath, so we've reduced the weight of the fittings of the seat. We've got uh, one-piece handlebars, so there is no adjustment, which is kind of a bit of a loss of a feature, but that feature costs weight, so we figure it's worth um, removing that function, but gaining that um, weight reduction. Um, we've got a few other things, like uh, a high-efficiency pulley down here, which is a large diameter pulley with an eccentric mount. Big bearing inside there to stress the distribute the load well. Um, this trike doesn't fold. Uh, all the rest of our range does, but the reason for that is that if we added a folding hinge, we'd add weight. So again, to get the weight down, we've removed that function. Um, we've also got little things, little details like cable guides. Cable guides run in inner wire as much as we can, so that reduces um, outer casing weight, which is only a small thing, but it all adds up. The top end models have got. Uh, XX SRAM components so, and uh, carbon cranks and uh, yeah that's probably about it the best thing though is to, to go for a ride <laughs>